Hello everyone, welcome back to Math with Allison. Today we are continuing our integration series. So we're wrapping up the Calculus 1 version and we're going to be talking about some applications in real life of integration. So let's go ahead and dive into it. This is the second part. So the first part we talked about acceleration, velocity, position, all that stuff. And right now we're going to be talking about net change. So that's why that's the second application. But here we have suppose a quantity Q changes over time at a known rate Q prime. Then the net change in Q between t equals a and t equals b, so b has to be greater than a, has to work over positive time, right, is the integral between a and b, Q prime of t, is equal to Q of a minus Q of b. We have a book publisher estimates the marginal cost of producing a particular title in dollars per book is given by that equation right there. And here we have that the books are between 0 and 50,000. And so those are the books being printed. And what is the cost of producing books 12,000 through 15,000? So what we can do in order to find that value, and this is seen a lot in like business calc, is we start at 12,000, right? And we're ending at 15,000. But we're going to be integrating the marginal cost. And this is going to give us the cost of producing those 3,000 books, right? So let's go ahead and find the antiderivative first. So we get 12x minus 0.0002x squared divided by 2. And then we're integrating between 12,000 and 15,000, right? So I'll go ahead and plug in upper minus lower. So that's a biggie uh, calculator problem for sure, but we end up getting $27,900 to produce books 12,000 to 15,000. So really this is 3,000 books, right? So let's go ahead and talk more about this because I found it really interesting. So if it's $27,900 to produce 3,000 books, I want to see how much it costs to produce each of those books individually. So this is an estimate, right? So if I divide it by 3,000, I end up getting a cost of $99.30. So let's talk about how much money the author would make if they sold it for different prices. So right here, let's pretend that the author wants to sell it for $15, right? And so we have to subtract off the cost of production in order to get how much profit they're actually going to make. And so here they end up making $6.60 per book. And remember that we are multiplying this by um, 3,000 books because that's how much they're producing. And so here we end up with a profit of $17,100. And of course, in real life, that's going to be distributed across other things, right? There's an editor, there's a publisher, all those different things. But what if they were to sell it for $20 per book? Here we take $20 and we subtract off the cost of production. And maybe that does include all that stuff already. I don't know. But we end up getting $10.70. And let's go ahead and multiply that by 3,000 books. Here we end up with a profit of 32100 So I just thought that was interesting. That wasn't at all part of the problem. This was the solution to the problem. But I just wanted to play with that. So our next example here is the future value. And so we're given an initial condition Q of zero, and we are given the future value Q at time T greater than zero, right? Because we can't have negative time. So here we have the formula. It's equal to Q of zero plus the integral of zero to T Q prime of X dx. So in application here, we have an example, a culture of cells in a lab has a population of a hundred cells when nutrients are added at the first hour. Suppose the population N of T in cells per hour increases at a rate given by the first derivative is equal to 90 E to the negative 0.1 T. We want to go ahead and find the actual function N of T for time, you know, T greater than or equal to zero. So I like to do this a bit different way. I don't follow the formula exactly, but I know in order to get N of T, I'm going to go ahead and integrate the rate of change. And so the rate of change here is 90 E to the negative 0.1 T. And we're integrating in terms of time, right? So first we have that constant multiple hangs out and we get negative 0.1 T divided by negative 0.1. And don't forget to add on that constant C. So here I can rewrite this, right? Negative 0.1 is negative 1 tenth. And we're dividing by a fraction. So when we divide by a fraction, we multiply by the reciprocal. And that helps us simplify it. So we get negative 900 E to the negative 0.1 T plus C. And so now what we need to do is we want to go ahead and find the C value. And we're going to do that by using the initial condition. So our initial condition in this case is that N of 0 is equal to 100 because we start off with 100 cells, right? So here 100 is equal to negative 900. E to the power of 0 is just 1. 
And so now I can add 900 to each side and I get 1000 is equal to C. So here we get our official equation. N of T is equal to negative 900 E to the negative 0.1 T plus 1000. And there we have our official equation. So now we want to go ahead and evaluate the long term cell population. So what does that mean? It means that time is going on forever and forever. So T is approaching infinity. We cannot actually evaluate long term population because we don't know infinite time. So what we do is we take the limit as T approaches infinity. That's why limits are super helpful. And we're doing this of our equation. So here, actually, we can go ahead and rewrite this. So we can say the limit as t approaches infinity. And here, that negative 900 stays in the numerator. But we can move that e to the denominator using exponent rules. And the exponent becomes positive, right? So what happens when the denominator, so e to the 0.1 t, is approaching infinity? Well, when we have a number divided by infinity, that goes to 0, right? It gets really, really small which tells us this item is going to zero. And so this ends up being zero plus 1,000, which is equal to 1,000 cells. And so this tells us the maximum amount of cells that we're ever going to have is going to be 1,000. It's going to be something like this. Our function is approaching that value of 1,000 in terms of cells, but it's never going to go above it, which tells us that that's the maximum. So that's all I have for us today. If you enjoyed this video, I have many more like it. So make sure to check out my playlist that are linked down below. Otherwise, please give this video a thumbs up and comment other problems or topics you'd like to see done. Thanks for watching.